Here's a short video on how to create a crank slider mechanism with a slider moving in the horizontal plane. Uh, as usual, I start with workspace and I check ruler, grid, x and y axis. Um, we want the um, uh, crank to be at zero, zero at origin. So I'm going to create a disk and either you double click on or go to geometry and you added the radius. I said that um, the radius of the disk uh, or the crank is 0.1 meters. So you say uh, 0 0.1. Um, by the way, before uh, before you start, uh, you you uh, want to uh, check another uh, setting. So we have. Um, the units, so numbers and units, and more choices, so distance meters, mass kilograms, rotations, radians per second, okay, force in newtons. I could change rotation to uh, revolutions, um, and but then angular acceleration and velocity uh, acceleration would be, so let's leave it to radians per second. Uh, and you can increase the number of digits to four, maybe. Uh, okay, so um, we have a circle, and it has here. You either edit this, uh, or you go to geometry window uh, and geometry, and we set the radius to 0.1. This is already scientific notations because we uh, we wanted four decimals. Um, Okay, and then uh, this has to go to zero zero, and you go, uh, you you um, added this, or could be also from uh, properties. Okay, so if I change this to 0 0.5, it moves so uh, again to zero zero. Crank at origin. Another thing you can change now is the uh, moment of inertia. And I said it will be 500 kilogram uh, meter squared. So I have the crank. Um, you can snap a motor uh, at the center of the disc, and we said that the motor would be of the torque type. I never said what the value of the torque is. Let's say it's 60 newton meters. Um, okay, so I have I have a crank that's rotating. And if you wanted to uh, rotate faster, uh, in a sense, you you work with the number of frames per, per second. So um, here I have, uh, so in order to increase number of frames per second, I can make this, let's say, uh, one. Um, so slightly faster. Again, this uh, these are settings that uh, there might become necessary uh, later on. Uh, let's move on and do the connecting rod. I said that you are going to generate links uh, horizontally, even if they m uh, occur most of the cases in the mechanism, the vertical orientation. And for this, actually, there is a way where I can put this in uh, part of the simulation. So I'm copying. And you go to uh, let's say object uh, view text. Mm. Object font. Okay, so I have the that was easy, but I can uh, I can change the font now. So I go to font and I can make it bigger font, say 12. Uh, maybe 12 was too much. But it's here, you can see it. Um, yeah, a nice way of uh, adding information about your simulation. So I have, the, I have the connecting rod now and I say connecting rod, this R3 has to be 0.5 meter long. So you can go to, I have height 0.04, um, maybe that's uh, proportionate, but uh, length would be 0.5 meters. Or you can go to window, 
uh, and geometry and change the width to 0.5 uh, next you want to put this in the assembly stay away from these uh, rather work with half joints so you get one of these and you snap it here and another one and you snap it here you hold a shift key this is selected this is not you hold a shift key and select the second one and then join so now you have a uh, you have a connecting rod on a crank uh, this is two degree of freedom in the term of motion um, so not not yet what we need uh, let's do a uh, uh, I can I can break with the exception I can make the punch um, you know from the so let's say point one height of the punch and then width point five maybe this one could go a little bit uh, uh, slender point zero three um, okay so let's go with um, was the uh, guide for the piston so I have the guide and I said that eccentricity um, eccentricity should be uh, eccentricity 0.02 okay so go here and would be uh, 0.02 meters all right so the eccentricity this is just the guide it's half of one of these um, I need the the other half of the joint and it will be this one and I snap it at the geometric center of the rectangle hold the shift key so shift press and I have both selected and I had uh, I said joint um, okay so looks like was would have been a good idea to to make this uh, uh, like we did with the uh, dragging horizontal, like we did with the connecting rod. I could swap uh, a value, so this was 0.05 and 0.1. And if I sh uh, hold and hold sh uh, hold shift and select both and uh, say join, so now I have a slider. Okay. Um, in order to complete this uh, the mechanism, I need pin joints. So here's half of a pin joint. Um, and then another half of a pin joint placed here. I hold a shift key. I need to click on the uh, cursor. Shift key and join. So, and then I want to start from uh, initial angle zero, which we, uh, which it is uh, right now. Let's zoom out. And haven't haven't saved yet, so make sure you save regularly, uh, not to lose work. And maybe I should save as um, and go to uh, somewhere. Uh, OneDrive this PC download desktop. Okay, let's put it on desktop and say slider cr or crank crank slider. And it's good to run. Um, now torque is uh, constant, and as you can see, it's accelerating. I don't have any load force. I haven't done yet what is uh, uh, other links negligible mass. So you go and make this uh, y negligible mass for your uh, punch press. If you make them significant mass, significant inertia, they will uh, the results will be different than the calculations uh, using principle of virtual work, which assumed um, that the um, <coughs> uh, and all the calculation uh, sizing the fly will uh, all assume that the other links have uh, zero mass. You cannot assign zero mass in working model; it will uh, report an error. So. 0.00, I don't know, five grams. That will be quite, uh, quite a small size uh, or uh, inertia uh, link. And 0.005 uh, grams, 0.005 kilograms. That is five grams for the punch. Okay. And um, here's a slider crank. And uh, I have this elsewhere, but what you uh, what you need to do next is to define the 
I'm not sure I want to go through uh, these steps again. They are documented elsewhere. So you want to have this. Uh, now I'm using full uh, rigid joint, and I snap it, and it will be attached to the background. I go to Edit, Select All, and Objects, and do not collide. Okay, so uh, the punch will penetrate the uh, the stock. And um, Right. I could I could move this uh, object, move to front, and you can change uh, appearance, windows appearance. I can make the uh, you know other color for a workpiece. Um, also had some points, and they don't have to be in alignment because they was just the uh, so one point and the other point and these will be the points you need to know their name so point 21 and the other one is point 22 okay and you need to have a point on the tip of the punch uh, or better yet you, you just define this conditional force it's now it won't be conditional force yet um, okay so I don't have any force in the horizontal direction and here is where the equation goes uh, using the values of this point, uh, position of this point and this other point, as well as position of uh, body, uh, of body 20, uh, point 23. And it's um, where the point velocity or the, uh, or the uh, punch velocity, body 10 velocity. Um, okay, so uh, now I have, and um, you know, left it as uh, like default, whatever values. This one, let's say, 20 newton, which is pretty small. Uh, actually, it's uh, bigger than uh, uh, than the early one. Uh, window appearance. I can change color to something else, so that is not um, can be distinguished from the from the arrow. Uh, arrow the the force. Okay. So at this point, other than uh, defining the uh, conditional force using the equations as explained elsewhere, uh, you pretty much have your uh, slider crank done. Um, if I want to observe the transmission angle, I'm clicking on the connecting rod and I go to uh, measure and it will be position in rotational graph and what do I have? I have um, rotation of body 5. So this is body 5 rectangle. Uh, if I want the um, other parameters, uh, others being uh, velocity and acceleration, you go measure position, velocity, and acceleration, rotation. And you have them all here. Um, Okay, and you go to Windows and Appearance, and you turn the axis on. Um, okay, now I'll have on the same, so same scaling, same uh, uh, on the y-axis, but different. Uh, that is position, velocity, and acceleration. What you could do: edit, copy, and then paste and then paste again. So I have three graphs um, and this is where it might crash, software might crash as you play with, uh, with meters. So this was position I could instead change it to velocity so this would be instead well, you just saw instead of P, it's, uh, it's V, body 5, velocity, rotation. And this is uh, body 5, uh, acceleration, rotation, rotational acceleration. So this will be D theta. D theta uh, 3 over DT squared. Actually, it's a second <sighs> derivative, and this one is first derivative. Mm, I 
Yes, that's first. So I take the twos off. Okay. And of course, the name has to. So this would be label. Where is it? Window appearance. And I have for rotation. I can close this. This one cannot be enlarged. So this is the transmission angle. Theta 3. Transmission angle. This is the derivative of the transmission angle window appearance. And that was T. It looks like I, uh, so yeah, I, I uh, pressed the T, the Y instead of T. So this one has to be over. So this is T, DT, DT. And then this other one, likewise, a T. Oh, same mistake. All right, so I should have copied this. And so window appearance. Okay. So I have three graphs: position, velocity, and acceleration uh, of theta three. Uh, you'd also want the slider displacement. <coughs> now, uh, if you uh, take a slider displacement, the center of this uh, rectangle, which is the punch, you'll have a bias over your calculation in Excel equal to half the, uh, the height of, uh, of this. Okay, let, uh, and we can, um, we could instead so what, what I did, I clicked on the link, I clicked split, and I move it outside of the of the mechanism. Um, so I could plot this one, and this will be the so go to measure position, velocity and acceleration. So like uh, let's say position. Uh, okay, and again here's where the software could crash. So let me save again. Um, so I delete this. The uh, ins uh, the uh, software as it's installed on uh, university computers uh, will be exactly like mine, an older version, which is more stable. Um, so it looks like I can go this way. All right. So I have just position, and this should be in the y direction. Let's call this S, and body 15. That's the punch. Um, in the y direction. Uh, okay, body body th body ten, and this is body five. Let's go again to the what did what did it say? Oh, it's a point. Okay, so point um, position of point. Uh, it doesn't even say. Oh, I cannot see position. We have uh, appearance, uh, uh, position of point 15. Okay, slider displacement S. Um, okay, so we'll be of this point. And then you go to Windows, appearance. So I do have now the slider displacement measured as the y value of uh, this point, uh, which is point 0.15. Um, if I instead want a positive value, I can uh, everything will be po a negative. It's below the x-axis. I can put a minus in front. So this is one a way of uh, showing slider displacement. If you want velocity and acceleration, you, you copy, paste, and you change P into uh, V, that's velocity. Of course, you need to uh, uh, adjust or uh, make the label on the y-axis match what uh, actually happens in the, um, uh, in, or, or what is actually plotted. And then for acceleration, you, you do it again, again, and it's here instead of P, it will be an A. 
for acceleration. Um, the other way of doing this, you could go to measure a uh, position y graph, okay, position of rectangle. Uh, so it's body 10 position y. That that will be position of uh, of the center of mass when the appearance shows center of mass. So the center of mass of the link. Okay. Now um, that's going to be offset by uh, the half of the height of this link. So what you could do is to um, let's see. So I, I'm, I'm zooming in, and I want to use. I haven't memorized how these are, but it says body ten width divided by uh, by two and zero. Okay. Um, and then what about this one? Body ten width divided by two. Okay. Let me let me snap a point here and see how it's explained. So body ten height divided by two. Um, oh, let's not forget this is uh, this is a rotated rectangle. It's horizontal and was rotated. Um, okay, so what I need to do is to to work with this. Okay, copy. So the width is actually the height because the rectangle was rotated. Um, Okay, so I go here and I say uh, plus because it's back towards origin body 10 width divided by 2 or I could say 0 0.5 times body 10 width. Okay, so with this adjustment I'm expecting to see of course, they need to match. I mean, one and one; those can be added, uh, adjusted. So, edit, select all, join back. So now I have the mechanism as it should. Save again, and um, so slider displacement. Both should be slider displacement. I hit run, and they should have comparable behavior. Uh, one goes up, one goes uh, down. So let's see where the difference is. Uh, this goes negative. Again, I say 0.15 in the y direction. Uh, rather, position in the y, and it will be a negative value plus a negative to make it like, you know, as, as, as if you measure it downwards in the negative direction of y. Uh, window appearance. Again, these may. Uh, make the software crash, this kind of maneuvers. Um, so run and I could likewise make this a negative and put a minus here. So they should now match uh, and they do. If you want to really, so I could uh, uncheck this and uh, crank length was 0.5, so point pl point 0.5 plus point point 0.65, point 0.7 the most, and likewise here going from 0, never gets negative, to Point eight. All right, so two identical graphs, and uh, so yeah, two ways of uh, of implementing uh, the slider displacement. If you want velocities now, which one, whichever, edit, copy, or other not data, edit, copy. And paste. Uh, and if I want to make this into velocity, if you take the derivative, uh, the constant dis the disappears, and instead of p, I put v, and this will be velocity. This will be ds. 
over dt or maybe you don't need the negative anymore uh, at all because in, in Excel you have for s some ne uh, negative values anyway so you, uh, you decide uh, how you want to report results your results um, and I hit run and of course the uh, axis limit for y do not no longer match so I, I usually go and make both to zero and let's cover this and this and I hit run so there's the velocity okay so I have velocity now you could instead of function of time already 25 uh, minutes of recording so you could instead um, measure position rotational graph my way of uh, uh, using uh, the designations for displacement or rotation or so I, I delete this and slider displacement as function of crank angle so this will be theta theta 2 um, theta 2 and this will be in radians and of course the limits now will go to uh, 2 times pi and I can uncheck this okay 2 pi uh, you cannot put equations there. Uh, please. So 2 pi would be uh, 6.28, let's say 6.3. 6.3. Okay, so this was, oh, no need to you'd recognize the change of, uh, of, uh, uh, of the independent variable. So units were. Uh, uh, adjusted accordingly. So now you, what you see is the just for this plot, this meter, slider displacement as function of uh, theta um, theta two angle. Now this has to go to if I want to uh, have just one cycle. So I said two uh, rather six point three one cycle and I can do the same um, for for velocities oh no this was 6.3 and uncheck and here I have instead of time that equation again it might crash you need to save often uh, and this is data 2 Alright, so I have position of rectangle. Let's take this off. Um, so I have a slider displacement, slider uh, velocity as function of crank angle, and you can do the same for the for with the transmission angle. One graph that you would have to generate is um, the rotational graph as function of time for the crank itself and in this one as you uh, run the simulation multiple cycles you'll see it zigzagging as so it's a drop in velocity as the as the punch uh, meets the the workpiece but again you need to I hope it's clear for everybody you would need to um, to uh, uh, program this conditional um, force as you can see uh, the system continues to it's accelerating uh, and um, you know, it's an excess of torque in the mechanism okay so with a properly uh, calculated and implemented uh, resistant force you're going to see these graphs remaining steady if I'm to uh, observe this kind of graph but you should change the time to theta 2 same as um, 
as uh, in these other ones and then the rotation of uh, circle one which is the flywheel this should uh, zigzag again look at the sample outputs in the pro uh, project specification um, okay what we could do say uh, because in the units now so number of units we had rotation radians. Um, I could change this to rotations in degree by just saying times um, times 180 over pi. Okay. So, and this will go, this has to go to 360. Okay. Uh, Units are no longer correct, so I need to go to appearance and don't show units. Um, I could, however, uh, say S is in meters. Okay, so I have in theta two, I could say is degrees. Um, and so the two graphs will look the same however here I have radians here I have degrees you saw what I did um, okay oh so slider displacement position rectangle I thought I deleted the the velocity uh, or I deleted the velocity although I wanted to delete the the, the duplicate or redundant to to the early graph um, again what's your left to do is to edit this uh, FY and use the if statement and use information about the position of so uh, Y of point 21 my case yours will be different numbers uh, point 22 and this one here point 23 so in your equation you'll make use of uh, these three points in the velocity uh, in the y direction of either of a point or either of the punch okay um, and um, there's there's also um, so the punch uh, it, it's uh, uh, it's important to consider starting uh, the punch operation after it reached uh, a steady speed. Um, so think of uh, you being the actual, uh, an actual punch press, being the operator of the punch. You don't put the workpiece and then turn the motor on because the motor uh, does not have uh, the stall torque, enough stall torque to, to go through the punch, so you need to let it build up speed. So this could be done by assigning an actual rotational velocity and say if you have nominal RPM of 100, so you say pi times 100 over 30, that's 10.47, so let's say 10 radians per second okay um, and this will already so accuracy I can I can make this bigger now uh, bigger accuracy more frames per second okay um, and um, I think this is it so other than uh, repeating what we did here with uh, uh, you know for the transmission angle to plot it not as function of time but rather of theta uh, 2 okay and this is rotation in it if I want it degrees then I'm going to just say times 180 over pi. So I have transmission angle in uh, and windows and appearance and take the units off. So I have the transmission angle in uh, theta 3 uh, in um, in 
in degrees. Oh, and wanted to go to so y should be from minus one eight. Hmm. Uh, it doesn't go from. Uh, we could say uh, going from zero to one eight zero. Let's see, and then this one only one full rotation. We say it's six point three. Uh, not even. Um, it has to be three sixty because we changed to to degrees by just multiplying by pi oh, one over eighty over pi. Um, why well, not showing? Maybe this one here needs some thinking. Uh, come on. So rotation degrees. What have I done to you? So body one position rotation 180 over pi. Uh, zero to ooh. So zero to three six zero. Okay. And then it's, it, it's still not showing up. That's okay. So I can make it zero now. Oh, that was it. So six point three. And then this goes away. And this one I said to one eighty. Maybe not. Hey, no. Three six zero. No, this isn't. This is this is one eight zero, and this is not six point three. This is three six zero. Okay, all right. Um, and one eight zero is uh, for the y axis. Uh, I said it never goes to zero, and one eighty might even be so one eighty one to zero. And it could go from 60 to 180 to 120. Come on. Okay, best is just let it, uh, you set it to zero, zero. And so zero, I said, and zero. And he'd run. And now you look at the graph. So it's measuring a negative value. Uh, although if you look at the angle, okay, so split, and I'm going to just make this angle zero, and look at it. Um, I think I rotate overhead. So what I could do, or what I'm going to do, it, it takes a just a little bit of time, is to swap the ends. The snapping helps quite a bit. Join. Uh, cancel. Save. You need to help it a little bit in place. Uh, it's too much. Oh. Undo join. Um, no. Should have been the other way. And then. Split join. Okay, so now I've got it. Save again. And I'm expecting the uh, this graph to be from uh, a positive value now. So it is. Okay. Of course, the fix would have been just to put a minus in front of the uh, what was on the y axis. Um, okay. And. You know, 50 to 150, maybe it's, it allows us to, so in the y action, uh, y axis 50 to 150, 150, and take the auto off. Uh, maybe 120, I had 120 at some point. Save. And of course, you can take care of the other two. Why is that? In order to, um, in order to um, compare Excel, important 
uh, expectation from the report. Excel was working model. Um, and at some, uh, you also have to measure the force, measure force. So you have a uh, force just in the y direction. Well, in the x direction, it's zero. So I need just the force, either the um, no, this is the way you delete it. Okay, so force in the y direction. And then if you want to measure the torque, so let's see, uh, windows appearance. Again, just uh, remember to save by doing this kind of maneuvers. It can crash the software. And then I click on the motor and measure torque transmitted. Uh, I'm mistaken with the arrow. Um, okay, so um, a rotation of circle. Okay, so this is the torque transmitted, and mm, torque of motor constraint force R3. Yeah, this is the constant value 60. Uh, it's not what you want to see. This is the average torque. If you want to, the actual torque transmitted, um, so it's not torque of the motor, rather you go and click on this to so say measure uh, total torque. Um, okay, so you don't measure the t total torque, it's going to give you the uh, the fluctuating torque, if you click on the motor to plot the torque, uh, then it will be just the, um, the constant torque. So I can torque transmit it. What was it? And I can take it from here and delete this. And I go to the meter and T average. Force. So now I have a dual graph um, with the constant torque and the fluctuation around the constant torque. If I change to, what was it, 50 to 70, um, So you see the average torque and you know, fluctuation around it. Um, let's see. I think you can window appearance. Uh, I'm wondering if you can uh, you can make it the secondary axis. Uh, this one does not have the option. Why well, I remember you can you can have secondary y axis in in uh, in working model. And that's how you need to separate, um, in most cases, you'd rather separate uh, position from in, in one graph, velocity in separate graph, acceleration in a, in a third graph, okay? So, I guess this was it. Uh, 43, 44 minutes of recording. I was hoping to be a shorter recording. Um, all right, well, uh, hopefully this uh, this was of help to you.